The social platforms that we use today are all centralized. Whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Uber, or any of a dozen others, both people and organizations have come to rely on giant monolithic platforms to connect them, mediate their interactions, and trust them with their data, identity, and brand. It starts simply enough. A few smart entrepreneurs build a useful platform. They get their first users, and pretty soon, it becomes clear that this platform is the next big thing. Investors start putting in money as more and more people around the world join this centralized platform. Now, third-party developers are invited to build apps on top of it, adding even more value to the community. The problem is that it's all centralized. One company controls all the interactions. People build their social identity on its domain. Companies host their brand identity on there, too. Developers get API keys to build atop the platform. At any time, the platform could delete an account, shut down a community, or revoke API keys of a developer. It could start charging more, or just shut down the service altogether. Now consider how we interact in real life. On the left, Bob and Alice are working in an office. They're thinking of grabbing lunch later. Alice and Carol plan to catch a movie that weekend. Across the street, a professor is teaching a class where they all collaborate on a document together. What happens today is that signals travel all the way to the centralized platform, to the company's servers hosted far away in another country or state. This requires scaling up, and money is spent on giant server farms. Storing all the people's information in one place attracts advertisers and government agencies looking to collect information about people in bulk. Open source software can help change this paradigm. It's software that anyone can download and install, or even freely build on top of. Let's say a person wants to host their own website or blog. They choose their own web host and install WordPress, an open source blogging platform. Now they can publish their own blog to their friends or over the internet to anyone in the world. They can also install WordPress plugins developed by people all around the world to extend their blog in new ways. The whole time they stay in control of their own data and their own website. Cubix began as a social network just like any other. We had a vision to help people get together in the real world, so we built several apps. Real life events, group rides, conversations, a marketplace to buy and sell, and dating. Then we realized we built a social platform that can benefit entire communities. So we went ahead and made it open source. Suppose you're a community that works hard to organize events and programs, but now you want to release an app for your members to interact with each other. You set up a server, install Cubix, and now your members can do all these things on their own time, helping unite your community. You can then install even more apps and plugins developed by others around the world and it all works locally on your own servers. This leads to an organic, decentralized ecosystem. Communities host social apps on their own servers, which run Qubits. Developers build more apps, which they can sell directly to the communities without fear of being disconnected by a centralized platform. They can build entire businesses around the apps and plugins they develop. Meanwhile, people can have an account in one or more communities and control their identity as they move between them. Today, if you wanted to build your own social network or app, what would you do? Would you use WordPress? No, you would probably have to hire someone to build an app for you. And of course, that's pretty expensive. You needed to raise a lot of money historically to do that. But finally, Cubix can have the sort of uh, affordability of these cookie cutter guys with the total flexibility of having your own team. That's the key. Just like with WordPress, where there's themes and all this kind of stuff, that's what you're going to get with the Cubix marketplace. Here is a little demo. You can see it working on the left. You've got the website and on the right, you've got a mobile phone essentially showing the same thing. As you can see here, you've got events, uh, people checking in, QR codes, attendance, uh, people keeping in touch, adding each other to their contacts, right? Keeping in touch. They can even do video conferencing with each other, which is what you can do on Telegram and WhatsApp but this time it's inside your own website that you own. And you can customize the look of how it looks. We're building a custom you know, social app for you, but in fact, we can quickly put it together because of the technology that we have.
Big Cubics came and they, they put that app together, they built it for us. It just blew me away. And, uh, and I didn't really know what to expect, but when you deployed the app and you, know, you showed me all the features and the functionality, I, I knew this was going to be a great, a great thing. So I really want to thank you for, uh, for all that you've done for us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, yeah without a doubt. Uh, well, only if during your conference you want your people to have a good, programs you know, like a, a good experience. Google get... Docs, obviously, and as well as Facebook. But those are very mediocre. That's really being able to keep up with the students to maintain that connection and relationships has really been a big challenge. When with Cubix we made money, we were able to pretty much within a few months recover what we paid, what we paid the Cubix, and since then we've been profitable. My name is Gerard Dache. I'm the Executive Director of the Government Blockchain Association, or GBA. We're a 501c6 nonprofit. We uh, have, we're an organization that has uh, about 100 chapters around the world. We've got about 15,000 people to connect to those chapters. We've got about 50 working groups. Uh, it's a very complex, dynamic uh, organization with uh, government and private sector people. My name is Rabbi Yaakov Pesach. I run an organization called Macquarie International. We work with students and young professionals from North America, Germany, and Russia bring them to Israel, you know, educate them and help them develop into true Jewish leaders that will go back to their communities and make a difference. Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Lentin, I'm a dentist, I'm a founder of the Dent Benefits Membership. I believe the tools that are going to become very successful and very used are the tools that foster connection between the people. I think right now there is much more of a disconnection, right? People can go and they post on Facebook about what's going on with them, what's happening in their life, kind of like announcing what's going on, but it's really not fostering the the unity really so much right people can send each other emails but to, to foster something that's that's united something that people are excited like a powerful direction powerful movement that's has really we haven't seen that so now back to our local communities here's that professor teaching a class but now with cubics running on the local wi-fi router they can all collaborate on a document much faster the signal never needs to go to a central server in california However, once in a while, an internet connection might be useful to let Greg join them from abroad. Many local communities can benefit from having their own social networks, buildings, universities, cruises, companies, nonprofits. With Cubix, people can plan activities, drive each other, date, buy and sell, and anything else that developers around the world can come up with. Each community is self-sufficient. Many cities around the world are building their own mesh networks to connect their citizens. Freifunk in Germany, Wi-Fi in Spain, Digital Stewards in Detroit, NYC Wireless in New York, Red Hook Wi-Fi in Brooklyn, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and many others. And now, in the wake of the net neutrality debacle, Fort Collins, Colorado is planning to launch its own municipal broadband. They will need software to run on these local networks. That's what we built. Cubics Platform, empowering people, uniting communities.